I was asked, how do you come up with your cake flavors? And then when I thought about it, I was like, hmm, my cake flavors actually mirror ice cream flavors that I enjoy, such as butter pecan, of course, you thought I was gonna say chocolate, but chocolate is next. I also love a rum raisin, which, you know I love a rum cake. I love orange sorbet, so I have orange cake. But there's one I hadn't made yet, which is cookies and cream. Until now, we're gonna be making a cookies and cream cake right here on The Sweet Spot. on our cake batter. The first thing, as you all know, is to mix our dry ingredients together. So I have my flour here. I'm gonna take my baking powder, my baking soda, and my salt. And just taking a spatula, I'm gonna mix all of that together until combined. We wanna make sure that baking soda, that baking powder, and that salt is fully incorporated. So just kind of folding the flour back and forth allows those different ingredients to just kind of melt through and combine. All right, that's all done. Our next step is to cream out our butter. Now a lot of recipes say cream the butter and sugar together. I like to pre-cream or pre-beat my butter just because it, I like it nice and smooth so the cake is more velvety and I don't have chunks of butter inside the cake or the batter. So this calls for 3 fourths of a cup, so it's a stick and a half. So we're gonna put one stick in that half right there. We're gonna move this aside and then we're gonna mix this on medium until that butter is all nice and whipped. Okay, my butter's all nice and smooth. I'm just gonna take my spatula and just kind of scrape down the sides. And then next, we're gonna add in the sugar. And now we're gonna cream the butter and sugar together. The sugar and butter are all creamed together. This is a very simple cake recipe. It has not a ton of ingredients. It's very, very simple to make. So what I'm going to do next is add the oil, sour cream, and vanilla. All right, and we got our vanilla in there. I often get asked, why do you use butter and oil? For me, I find my cakes are a little bit more moist. If I put just omit a little butter and add a little oil, if you wanna do all butter in the recipe, by all means, go for it. Instead of adding 3 fourths cup of butter, go for a full cup. All right, so we are going to blend this on medium to blend all of this together. So we have our sour cream, our vanilla, and our oil added to the batter. So our, we have a nice smooth batter here. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl and kind of put my spatula across the bottom to make sure all of that butter is mixed in because butter does like to hide at the bottom of your mixing bowl. Scrape down the sides. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is start rotating in our flour and our buttermilk. So just, I normally do it in two halves. So I'm gonna put half of the flour into my bowl. Just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be precise. And then I'm gonna blend this on medium and then we're gonna add some of our buttermilk. All right, so we're gonna add half of that buttermilk and then blend this again on medium, and then we're gonna do it all over again, remaining flour, remaining buttermilk. All of the buttermilk and flour are combined into the batter. There's two more ingredients we need to add. The egg whites and the magic ingredient, the cookies for the cookie and cream. Uh, the Oreos that we're gonna add in. So what I do next is I beat my egg whites to stiff peaks. I use a hand mixer for this. You wanna put your hand mixer on, it's gonna be on a high speed. I start at low and work my way up. 
because you're gonna beat those eggs into stiff peaks and then you're gonna fold the last two ingredients into the batter. So I'm just gonna quickly whip up my eggs. All right, there we go. My egg whites are nice. They have nice and stiff peaks. We're gonna remove my paddle over here. And then we're gonna take this bowl, bring it in closer, because we're now gonna fold in all of those egg whites. So you can see I'm just gonna smooth my egg whites in there. And just using your spatula, it takes a little muscle, just fold the egg whites in until they're completely combined into your batter. I folded in all of my egg whites, and the reason why I like to beat the egg whites and fold them in, it puts more air, it makes the batter fluffier, because when I add my cookies, they, they don't just fall to the bottom. The, the batter's nice and fluffy enough for me to add ingredients such as the cookies, which are a little heavier. If I had a really stiff cake batter, the cookies may just, they may not move throughout the batter, they may get pockets in one side. So that's kind of why I do it. So I'm just gonna fold in some of the cookies a little at a time. So I just took a handful into my batter and then once again, just folding them in. It's because I wanna kind of make sure that they're evenly distributed throughout the batter. So by folding in a little at a time, it allows the cookies to spread out and really not clump into the batter. So I'm gonna take another handful, just put it in there and fold these in. And then I'm gonna keep adding until I don't have any cookies left and they're all folded into the batter. And then it will be time to fill our cake pans. It is now time to fill our cake pans. I have you can, you can use either nine inch or eight inch cake pans. I'm just using eight inch, but nine inch cake pans work just as well. I've prepared them with some parchment paper and butter and flour besides so they don't stick. Um, but you're gonna fill both of these with even amounts of batter. Also too, I use the thin Oreos and you may have seen in a recipe and you're like, why did I choose thin? I find that when you bake this cake, the thin Oreos melt into the cake and when you bite into a slice, it's a soft, chewy Oreo, not a hard, crunchy. So it just flows with the cake. They go, they distribute it more evenly to me and they just create that iconic cookie, cookies and cream flavor. So let's start filling our cake pan. All right, so I'm gonna move over to a little ladle here, and I'm gonna ladle in even amounts of batter into each one. The reason I like to use a ladle too is because I can kind of control if I, you know, I'm not pouring in, so if I get a part that doesn't have a lot of those cookies in there, I can actually kind of balance it out with another spoonful with a little bit more cookies. And what I do is I put even amounts into each cake pan until I don't have any more left. So as you can see, I did two there. So I'm gonna come over here and then two more. And then move back to this side and do another two. And then I'll do this until all of my cake batter is gone. Both of my cake pans are filled and I just like kinda drop them onto the countertop. That helps the batter kind of smooth out and even out. So just a couple of drops, it releases air bubbles, smooths out the batter, and makes them ready enough to go into the oven, which we're about to do now. You're gonna bake these in a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna give you a big time range because I just wanna tell you every time I've made this cake, it's been within this range, but a slightly different time. And I think it's the nature of the cookies, and the heat of my oven, but I've had it ready as early as 20 minutes and I've had gone as long as 30 minutes. And I tell you, every time the cake is done perfectly, but the time is a little off. So I'm saying 20 to 30 minutes, set your timer for 20, check them. If they're still not done, you'll be able to gauge. I, I do it in like two minute increments or five minute increments. So if they're not done at 20 and they're still quite raw in the middle, 
I set it for 25. If they're still a little raw at 25, I set it for 30. If they're almost done, I give it a couple more minutes. So you'll be able to gauge, but just know you could have a big range. So if they're not done in 20 minutes, don't worry, they can take up to 30. So we're gonna throw these in the oven so we can actually finish making our cake because I have an, I have an exciting cookies and cream buttercream recipe for all of you. So I mentioned I had an exciting cookies and cream buttercream recipe for all of you. And that's because this buttercream recipe includes cookies into that ah, velvety smooth vanilla buttercream. So the first thing you need to do is actually grind down some Oreos. And this is another way these thin Oreos really come in handy because they don't have a ton of cream so you don't have to scrape off the cream if you use the larger oreos you want to get rid of some of that cream with these they ground down perfectly and you don't have to pull them apart and scrape off the cream so i can just put all of them into a food processor and we're going to grind those down as fine as we can they don't grind down to like a powder so don't worry about it but you want a very light crumb you want a very small um, texture in the crumb. You don't want a thick crumb. You want to grind them as much as you can until they're fine, 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 fine. So I am actually just going to put these in here and I just let my food processor run on high until they get nice and smooth. So here we go. I have run my food processor on high and I've ground out all of those Oreo cookies. So I'm just going to remove my blade here then remove mine and just take a spatula and you'll see I have like this nice crumb. They do want to stick together because remember there's a little bit of that cream but just go ahead and just kind of put them into a bowl because once we get our buttercream going we're going to add them in and I do like to take my spatula and just kind of separate them because in the food process that they want to stick together. Oreos like to be stuck together. Um, and I just take my spatula and break up those crumbs because we're going to work these crumbs into a cookies and cream buttercream that is going to taste delicious. So let me get move my food processor to the side. And we're going to start making our buttercream. Now that we've ground down our Oreos, it's time to start making our buttercream. So what I like to do first is I like to mix my Oreo crumbs into my confection of sugar. I find it helps them evenly combine and the sugar breaks them up a little bit. So I get an even distribution. So you just wanna kinda take your spatula and fold them until you get those Oreo crumbs evenly distributed throughout your confection of sugar. It also helps break them up and give you smaller particles of those cookie crumbs. Because once it goes into confectioner sugar, you can't see them, but once you start mixing this buttercream, you're gonna start to see those little bits of Oreo. So now that those two ingredients are mixed together, I'm going to add my butter. So I'm gonna add all of my butter into the mixer. Add in my last stick, and then we're gonna whip all of this butter on high until it's nice, creamy, and smooth because we don't want to add confection sugar if the butter's not nice and smooth because then you can get chunks of butter in your buttercream. So the, the best base and the best way to start a buttercream is to make sure your buttercream smooth, really whipped out so that once you add the sugar, it starts to create this nice, creamy, velvety, frosting for you. So let me get my whip attachment on here, or whisk attachment, and we're going to whip that. Remember, on medium to medium high, you want it really whipped out, nice and smooth. You may even have to scrape down the sides of your bowl in between, but just make sure that butter is nice and smooth. So I've whipped my butter until it's nice and smooth. It's now time to add the confectioner's sugar. I add a little at a time because there's a lot of confectioner's sugar. So just spooning in a good amount. I do about a quarter at a time. Once again, just eyeball it. I don't want to overpower that butter with too much sugar right off because once again, I'm trying to control it 
and keep it nice and smooth. And we're gonna mix this on medium until all of that confectioner sugar is combined. All right, so I temporarily removed my whisk because I scraped down the sides of my bowl and now I just wanna add whatever's remaining of the confectioner sugar. So we'll put that over there. And I'm just gonna whip this last bit of confection sugar, and then we're gonna start adding our cream to really balance out how stiff it is. Because your buttercream should be very stiff. And then as we add the cream, it's gonna to start to thin out. But before I do that, I'm gonna add my pinch of salt. And we're gonna add our vanilla after our cream. So pinch of salt and then blend on medium to medium high. All right, so it's time to add in our cream and I add in a little bit, not all of it. So I add in about half of that cream, blend it on medium and see it loosened up, loosen up. If it loosens to the texture you want, don't add any more cream. If you feel like it's still too stiff, you want it creamier, add more cream. And even if you get to the fourth of a cup and you want yours a little smoother, you can add more cream. Your cream is kind of your balancing agent for texture. So we're gonna blend this on medium and see what we have. So I like the texture I have. I went ahead and put all of my cream into the buttercream. And now I'm gonna add my vanilla extract. It's gonna be my final ingredient. And then we're gonna whip this on medium and then it's time to get our cakes put together. Now that my buttercream is done, it's time to start building our cakes. So I have my first layer here. I'm just gonna take a good amount of that buttercream right on top of that layer and then just smooth it out so that we can stack it. So I'm just gonna smooth this out. You wanna make sure your cakes are completely cooled. So I gave them time to cool. Uh, they even cooled down a little bit more while I was making the buttercream. If you feel like you don't wanna wait for them to naturally cool, you can, like I wrap them and plastic wrap sometimes and stick them into the refrigerator. I will say if you do that, I wrap them and then put them back in the pan so they hold their shape nice. Um, so when I stack them like they're not warped or they have that nice round shape, just a little support. Honestly, I don't know if it's doing anything, but I do that and they come out perfectly cool and they maintain their shape. So if you want to take that tip, you can, um, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> I don't know if there's any proof that the pan ends adds any extra support. It's just something I do and they always come out cool and perfect and maintain their shape. All right, so my first layer is done. So I'm gonna take my second layer and I actually use the bottoms for the of the cake. One bottom for the bottom, <laughs> one bottom for the top just remove my parchment paper there, press it down, get it nice and firm, and then do the same step, just the large amount of that buttercream on top, smooth it out, and then I'm gonna smooth out the top, bring it down the sides, so then we'll be ready to do some piping and a little chocolate drizzle. You see, I moved to the sides. We're just gonna continue smoothing the, the frosting of the buttercream around the cake, getting everything coated. I take my knife afterwards and do a little smoothie, and then we're gonna set up and do our chocolate drizzle and finish with some Oreos. So it's time to finish up our cake. I, After I completely frosted my cake, I did put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes to get really cold and set because we want that cold cake when we put our chocolate drizzle on top. So now I have my chocolate chips here and I have my heavy cream. We're actually gonna microwave our heavy cream to warm it up to melt our chocolate. Now, using a microwave, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna just put it on like two minutes or a minute and get that cream going because it'll boil and bubble over. I do mine in 30 second increments and when I hit that second 30 seconds, if it's not warm enough, I watch it to make sure it's not overheating. So I'm gonna throw my cream in the microwave and start melting my chocolate. All right, so my cream is warm enough to melt my chocolate. So I'm just gonna pour that over. And then using the whisk, 
I'm gonna whisk until that chocolate's melted and nice and smooth. So you just wanna continue whisking until your chocolate melts. It'll be nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna drizzle it over our cake. All right, so after you whisk your chocolate and get it nice and smooth, I'm gonna show you my trick. I use a baster to really drip the chocolate on my cake. Some people use a spoon. I found for me, the baster works best because I just can load it up with the chocolate. I kind of just like knock it off the tip. And then I come really nice and I just kind of take the baster and get a piece and you see how it creates a nice drip right over the sides of the cake. A great thing too, if your cake is really nice and cold from the freezer, it stops the drip so they don't go too far. Mine could have stayed in the freezer a little longer because you notice my drops are going all the way to the bottom. But if you have it super, super cold, it stops the drops before they get to the bottom. So just taking a baster and creating the chocolate drops around the cake. And I space them out so that all my drops are not in the same place and it doesn't force them completely to the bottom. And you can see just coming around and I can go back in and add more if I want to. So look, I can add one in between right there. That way I'm not forcing that other drop all the way to the bottom. Can you see how that just creates that? And you just go around the cake. If a couple hit the bottom, don't worry about it. It's all good. But if you're the colder your cake, the more the drops are gonna stop before they get all the way to the bottom. So now that all my drips are done, I go back in with my baster. And now I'm just gonna coat the entire top and kind of connect them. Once you finish your drips, you can actually take your baster or just take a spoon and pour a coating over the entire top of the cake. That's optional. You can just keep the drips because we are gonna add additional decorations to the cake. So I put all the remaining buttercream into a piping bag and we're just gonna pipe kind of rosettes or dollops of that buttercream onto our cake and garnish with Oreos. So here we go. And just stick an Oreo inside and we're gonna do that around the entire cake. enjoyed this cookies and cream cake recipe. I had so much fun bringing it to all of you. Come back and see me. Hit like, subscribe. More exciting flavors and cakes to come right here on The Sweet Spot.